And welcome to Friday night. I'm James Van Ossel. This is Car Con Carne. Still out of the car. We're out of the car. I, it feels like for good. Quarantine Con Carne is sponsored by CNH Financial Services, who offer a variety of products ranging from traditional merchant accounts to a zero cost payment processing solution, which eliminates the expense associated with accepting Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express as a form of customer payment. CNH Financial Services ETAB solution is easy to set up for your business for online ordering and curbside pickup. CNH also offers cost-effective commercial lending programs, which can help get your business the money it needs to make it through these unprecedented times. To learn more, contact CNH Financial Services at 855-600-2437 or go to chfs.us. So I, I'm recording this live on a Friday night, nine o'clock at night, 24 hours from now, in Bridgeview, Pegboy celebrates their 30th anniversary. It's a drive-in show. Load up the car, bring the kids. Uh, Seat Geek Stadium in Bridgeview. It's 30 years of Pegboy. Local H is on the bill. Jake Burns of Stiff Little Fingers and the Mighty Bull Weevils. All in one night. Doors are at five. Buy your tickets at chicagodrivein.com. To drive the point home on the show with me tonight, it's Pegboy. And Daryl Wilson from the Bull Weevils. It's everybody. <laughs> this is great. This is a true preview of what we're getting at the drive-in tomorrow. And I just want to start with this thought. The last time I saw a Peg Boy song performed live on stage was last year. Rise Against played Through My Fingers when they did the Chicago Theater. Right. And Peg Boy maybe was never a household name, but those who know Peg Boy love and continue to be influenced by Peg Boy. That has to feel kind of good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, we've been at it so long. Um, that I think a lot of the, you know, when, when, when this kind of music started to go, get accepted by the mainstream i think you know we're proud to say that you know a lot of the bands that made it a little further than we did monetarily wise and popular you know radio wise uh have attributed some of their you know influences to us we think we think it's great we think we really do so this is a celebration of 30 years together i, I want to kind of walk through a little bit of your history kind of talk about the beginning talk about starting as a band let's go back to 1990 uh three chord money uh speaking of through my fingers came out i, I think there were probably expectations I, I hate to use a word like super group but you guys started with pretty impeccable punk credentials bopal stiffs effigies naked ray gun did you feel there were expectations on you guys when you started the band actually when we started the band uh we were practicing in our parents basement on the south side <laughs> so no, there weren't huge <laughs> expectations at that point. Well, tell me, tell me how you felt as a band when you were starting out. Like, what, what was, what was the scene like? What was the attitude? Where, where were your heads at? Larry, anybody, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, scene... I mean, the thing for us, I mean, at at that time, I mean, obviously, you know, we we all grew up through punk rock through the '80s, uh, and at that time, the scene was it was a pretty small. Uh, and John has referred to it as an incestuous scene where a lot of friends were in different bands together and there was a lot of cross, you know, a lot of, uh, how do you say, you know, a lot of us were in a lot of other bands together throughout that scene. So, I mean, when you said we were feeling pressure, we were, we were really basically just doing what, what we had been doing for, for years prior to that, playing music with friends. So, so we really didn't have any expectations. And I know they kind of they kind of framed it as some kind of a super group, but we never really saw it that way. Um, we, we knew a, a, a small group of musicians who all had common interests in, in the same type of music. And um, it was kind of easy for us all to get together and, and just go from there and see what would come out of it. I'm going to stay in this era just for a little while longer, because for me, I was still kind of young at that point this part of Chicago music history still feels mythological because I wasn't going to see as many shows as I did later in life. Like what were the clubs you were playing? What were the, the places you were hanging out at? Like set that stage for me. Anybody want to take that one? We hung around in the punk rock bars, Exit and Dreamers. Um, I don't remember what else was around then. You played those all ages shows out at the McGregor's, like yeah, you guys we'll, played yeah. with, you know, Jawbox and things like that. I mean, that those were like amazing are, shows. I mean, for to talk about like a super group, I mean, you might have not thought that, but all of us as fans, you know, 
kind of looked at it that way and you guys came out with just a punch I mean, there was nothing that came out of that that in any way was you know disappointing it, it was definitely more than what some of us inspected in some senses and that's why you kind of have that whole thing of you're always in our hearts and you grow you know just exponentially bigger and bigger all the time no matter what i mean you, you guys have just these amazing live shows it's interactive you know we we know you know we're part of that you know because we're all part of the same scene and you know it, it was just you guys hit with punches that you know all of us took and we were just flat blown away and every show you guys put on everything you put out was always amazing so no matter what you played no matter where you played no matter what the show was it all just became legendary in its own way and hence there's 30 years of this stuff and you know we get to still witness the amazing you know artists that you guys are as peg boy wow oh, promote 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 thank oh. you <laughs> I, want, I want daryl to be our new singer <laughs> You're he's, way, he's way nicer than Larry. <laughs> really, you know, back to it, James. I mean, back in the '80s, there there really weren't that many places to hang out if you were into punk rock. I mean, you know, like Joe said, there there was, you know, Johnny May. You know, John's a little older than us, so he he was at a couple other oh, places. Like Club COD, uh, Metro, Cubby Bear. You know, they all had some great live punk rock shows. I know a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of younger people would never even believe that there were punk rock shows at Cubby Bear, but there were some great ones. And uh, So you know, true. Wrigleyville back then, what people don't realize, it was pretty sketch. Like it, it yeah. wasn't a place you dropped the kids off at and, and just hope for the best. Wrigleyville, you know, Wrigleyville at night was, you know, junkies and, <laughs> and street people and punk rockers. That was basically about it. It was shady. I mean, and people... Now, now, if you roll through it in the present day, it looks like you're driving through Northbrook or Highland Park. It looks like Disneyland. It, it kind of yeah. does. Uh, we have some people watching. We have a lot of people watching on Facebook Live right now. Uh, Bob says, say something, John. John Haggerty's kind of the quiet storm. He's, uh, he, he's very measured and careful about what he says. I think he's just calculating what he's going to say. I thought you'd never shut up. That's all. <laughs> uh, Dennis Buckley of the famous Chicago band 88 Fingers Louis says, is Larry wearing a parka? You do look a little toasty there, Larry. Are you somewhere cold? I, you know, this is my uh, stylish hoodie. I, I got dressed up for this occasion. <laughs> and Don, a gray hoodie, but today I went big. Not and, wearing underwear though. <laughs> yeah. And Don I'm made afraid. note that uh, he made note that there was already an incest mention, mention in the conversation, the first one of the night. I hope it's the last one, but you just don't know. It's live. Anything could happen. Yeah. Good it's up for grabs. All right, so let's bounce around a little more Pegboy history. Let's talk about that first album, Strong Reaction. Tell me about what it went into making this one. Um, you know, so the first full-length Strong Reaction, I mean, what really went into it was, you know, when you get together with, with people that you haven't really played with before, you all try to bring your best to the table, you know? You don't want to be the wink link of, of your band when you're, not, when you're not that familiar with each other. So I think we we kind of all just went into this trying to give it everything we had and to be the best we could possibly be, not only for ourselves, but not to let down each other. And I think, um, you know, as, as it, you know, as that album went, as that album went together, it was really us really focused and really trying hard to put something out that we're proud of. And, 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 and as well as the other members could be proud of you for doing. It really does still hold up. All right, let, let's, we'll, we'll zip through the other ones too. Um, jumping ahead to the four EP. My God, I still can't get enough of Never a Question. Mm -hmm. Th that song still rips to me. Yeah, that's a good one. I still yeah. love playing that song every time. Yeah, we put that one on. We put that one on the back burner for a little while, um, and then we brought it back. And it really—that's a special song to me because I wrote that about my grandfather, and, and it, you know, he he uh, succumbed to uh, Alzheimer's disease, and uh, he was really a huge influence in my life. So that song, I really kind of spilled some emotion into that, and um, I, I love it. It, it. it reminds me of him every time we sing it. Earwig came out in 1994 the next full length 
this this was I think your magnum opus, this Sinner Inside Sideshow, Wages of Sin. You, this is a monster album, you guys. Oh, thank you so much. I think that was probably that was probably was that. Uh, I think that was Pierre Pierre Kesley's first uh, record with us. Yeah. In the south of France. Oh, so yeah. you're the one who bought it, huh? Yeah. Hey. I, and I, one of my favorite covers. I mean, your version of Mission of Burma's Revolver is, is just as good as that song gets. Yeah, that song stands on its own. Well, it, you mentioned Pierre's name. I there, There's no delicate way to get into it. Pierre passed, I think it was like a week ago. Um, he was in your band until Raygun reformed. Right. He was he was a part of the band. He was such as we talk about influence in this town and uh, on the music. He was a major one. I mean, I mentioned Rise Against. I know Joe said Pierre was wildly influential on his musicianship. Tell me about your relationship with Pierre and what he brought to Pegboy. You know, I, I think a lot a lot of people don't know this, and and, and it, it even shocked me when it was brought up to me when Pierre's first stint with Naked Reagan uh, ended. Um, he was with Pegboy much longer than even his first stint with Raygun. Uh, so between, you know, between those two, it, it was, it, it surprised me when somebody told me that he was with Pegboy longer than he was actually with Raygun until he reunited with them in, in, in uh, what was it? 2007, I think. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, Pierre, um, I mean, through all of pretty much all of, uh, Pegboy's history was integral. He did all the touring we ever did. He did ninety-five percent of it. So I mean, when you when you spend months on end, twenty-four hours a day together, I mean, you really, you know, you're almost like brothers. You're almost like brothers at that point. Um, so yeah, it was when when he passed, it, it it really kind of took me a couple hours, but it really set in. It, it it's a it's a huge loss. He was a super guy, super, super human being, great bandmate. Um, I, you really couldn't have a, a nicer guy to work yeah. with and be friends with. And, and, yeah. And, yeah. and I'm proud that he, he was with us for so long, really. Hey, I thought when he passed, I thought, well, maybe Peg Boy won't want to do the interview. Maybe it'll just be weird. But then I thought, no, this is the perfect reason to keep the interview going is to talk about him and acknowledge his contributions there's no better time than right now yeah no he was a giant he was he was an absolute giant and uh yeah the world was a better place with him in it for sure you know and i james i actually you know i mean i i was kind of thought about that as our as, as our as our 30 year anniversary covid show is was coming up and you know I, I was hoping that, you know, it wouldn't put a shadow over it. And, and, and as it turns out, um, for me anyway, um, I'm looking forward to do this, at the show as, as kind of a tribute to his friendship and his time in our band. I mean, I, it's, it's unfortunate that it, you know, that it turned out that way, obviously, but um, we're going to look at this as a, as a positive and, and kind of, you know, send Pierre off and, and have a tribute uh, for him. So that the show is really going to be more about him than, than it is us. Yeah. Yeah. The celebration. Yeah. Bottom line, about, it's, uh, it's going to be a special night. Go ahead. You think about the uh, the other bands that he was in too. Uh, Strike Under and Trial by Fire. Oh, fire. Right. They, were, they were, you know, major bands at the time. Uh, well, in Chicago anyway. At that time it was a lot smaller scene. But I remember... Uh, you know, seeing Strike Under, there's there's pictures surfacing of Pierre like at 17 or 18 playing that same bass that he played, you know, every show with, recorded every song with. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, it just really uh, bringing back some memories for me. Especially, I think the very first punk band I ever saw was Strike Under at O'Banion's. And I, I distinctly remember saying to myself, you know, this is great. And at the same time saying, this is also something that I could probably do, which never happened before. Like before that, I was into, uh, you know, big, you know, arena rock bands like, um, 
you know, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and Deep Purple. And it never occurred to me that I'd be able to, I could do this myself without being some kind of virtuoso, virtuoso with, uh, you know, 30 years of playing experience, uh, you know, before I could even dare to get up on stage. But after seeing those guys, my attitude changed right then and there. So I pretty much have Pierre to thank for that. And, um, and also the thing is, in any band he was in, I'll bet you, I know at least in Naked Ray Gun and Peg Boy, he's like, um, he's like the most valuable player. And he's the most valuable member because, uh, you know, on and off stage, he would, he would give, uh, he'd bring a lot to, you know, to the dynamic of the band. Like if we're on the road, he would, he could drive until most of us dropped. <laughs> he, he could, uh, you know, he could do the songs. He could, he could load gear. He could, he could do everything. <laughs> so he was like, uh, and he always had a great sense of humor. Uh, you know, always made the time go by faster. So yeah, he was something that people don't know probably about him was that he was, you know, he was the most valuable player in, in any band he was ever in. Not just yeah, that, because he wrote great songs too. You know, which, yeah. That's a wonderful way to memorialize him. And tomorrow night will be special. It is again at SeatGeek Stadium uh, in Bridgeview. It's a drive-in show. Uh, top to bottom, uh, on the bottom, the bull weevils, top peg boy, that bill is stacked. Um, it, it's going to be tremendous. What I found interesting as John's talking about how he felt he didn't need to be a virtuoso to play. There are so many people who look to John Haggerty as this epic guitar player, uh, like hearing you be self-deprecating about your own playing blows my mind because you've influenced so many. Yeah. You don't feel it, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Well, was, was... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I roll from the brother. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's jump ahead a couple of years. Uh, you know, we've been kind of crossing our fingers, hoping for the past 20 plus years there'd be a new Peg Boy album. But back in 1997, we got Cha Cha Demore. Tell me about that. You want to go on that one? Yeah, go ahead. Nobody bought that one either. Yeah. Okay, I hear I'll start. I I'll start. Dog dog rules. Ah. <laughs> I think that was a was that a Pierre song? I think that was song. a Pierre song, right? That's yeah. a Pierre song. Mm -hmm. and, and isn't that now Joe, isn't that didn't we record that one in France? That's the one we did with Ian Burgess in France, wasn't it? No, that was Earwig, right? Are you uh, sure? No, I'm not. <laughs> 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 we're getting old, man. James, we we're forgetting yeah. all this stuff. It's you it know what? I mean, it's thirty years of band, sure. and you got you know all that French wine you got back in the day because you guys were like you know big guys going to France recording, you know, and then it, it all comes back to you at some point where you're gonna play Walk On By. It'll be like let's play it, it, I, but my Walker Walk On By. Walker On By is what you're gonna be playing. So that's okay. Um, <laughs> and you know I only kid because I love you guys. You know that's the only reason why I kid. <laughs> You're uninvited. <laughs> you invite me all the time, then you uninvite me. Why do you do that? Why do you do that to yourselves? I love you and I hate you. <laughs> it's so hey, punk rock. I get a text from Daryl early in the day. Uh, is it cool if I jump on the peg boy thing? Well, Larry okay. called. Larry texted me yesterday. Well, that's my point. Like, and and Daryl's like, "Well, Peg Boy invited me." I'm like, "Well, yeah, of course." But that's some punk rock. <laughs> they invite me only to chastise, to promote, and then to then say, "Get out." That's all I told. You know, I'm usually the only one that's talking during these things, so I had to have <laughs> Daryl on to help. Now, again, we said John's the quiet storm. He was quiet until he didn't need to be. He said a lovely piece about Pierre, and now it's back to you, Larry. <laughs> And now back to you. And now say, back to you, Larry. James, have you ever seen a punk rock band that where more people had their reading glasses on? <laughs> Actually, I, holy shit, I'm the only one. You're, uh, the, you're the only person there. You're the only punk band I know of that is completely beardless. Yeah. And beardless. Tattooless. No, tattooless. 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 Wait, not there's not a trace of ink on any of you? Not a trace, not, not a, a drop. Man. Not a piercing, not a tattoo, not a beard. I, I do find that astonishing. 
<laughs> I know, I'm kind of proud of that. I've, I've kind of become proud of that over the years. <laughs> so, all right, going back to 1997, that was pretty much it for new music from Peg Boy. There, there's always been the, the promise. They, 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 yeah, the, rub the, it in. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, we've all been kind of hoping and waiting that maybe there'd be new Peg Boy music at some point. I mean, you still hang out. You still talk to each other. I, I guess the question is, why, why hasn't there been more music? We talk about it a lot, but that's the problem. Is all we do is talk about it. About it. But just, you know, don't give up on us yet. Never. <laughs> okay, good. Never. Germany. Listen, no, dude, we've been with you for 30 years. We're not giving up on you. Like, um, we're three decades into this. We, we can't walk away. You know, we, we have too much invested emotionally in this. <laughs> All right, we'll promise. Like we've promised a million times before. We'll get some. <laughs> so as you prepare for, I mean, this is kind of a historical event tomorrow. Do you, do you prepare a set list different from what you would have prepared five years ago? You should see how they make their set list. You should <laughs> see how that's made. It is completely a... Um, it's, it's a masterwork on engineering a set list together. It's Skinny walks up with like a blank piece of anything, whether it's cardboard, a napkin or paper. And then he says, hey, are we playing these songs? And Larry goes, that sounds good. And then John looks at it and goes, I'm not playing that. And then it goes around again and they figure it out. And finally they come up with a set list and it's, it seems to work somehow. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's an amazing thing to watch. Because it's it's a it's a total shit show, but it comes out as a great thing in the end, which is awesome. <laughs> and we will get to enjoy that tomorrow. Uh, I'm I'm excited. Like for me, this is a thrilling night. This is this is selfish. I get to take my kid to this show. Like he gets to see like these bands that I'm super into that he hasn't really seen or heard that often. Like we're at that point in life where we can share the music with the kids, and I think that's awesome. Like I'm super psyched. On that you know, level. James, when you said that I've had I've had two other people today call me and tell me they're coming with their kids so it's it's going to be interesting it's going to be you know who what? knows what to expect I mean we're entering ground that nobody you know very few people have entered in with this COVID thing um, we're typically a band that has a lot of crowd interaction sure uh, how that's going to play out in a parking lot full of cars um, it's going to be interesting, you know. I, I, I'm hoping for the best, um, and I and I hope I think it'll be a good show. But it, it's going to be a little bit surreal, and um, and we're going to roll with it and see what happens. I mean, it's going to be interesting to say the least. I mean, a once in a lifetime thing, you guys. It's 30 years of you guys, and you know, it's this pandemic stuff comes up. But I mean, to have this opportunity to even have a show yeah. and have it happen in Chicago. And, you know, the weather hopefully will be great enough, which it will be no matter what. I mean, this is an amazing thing that you guys have been around for 30 years. You guys are still amazing. This show gets to happen. Um, you know, every, it's going to be enjoyable regardless, because every time you guys play, it's enjoyable. That's the key thing. Yeah, I mean, there's the perspective. One, you're Peg Boy. You are beloved in this town. Two, you're going to be performing for a bunch of people who haven't been able to see live music for seven months. True. This is yeah. like they've just been let out of prison and they're able to go on their first date. Like this is, you're, yeah. you're going to see the pure id released tomorrow night in a parking lot. It's going to be magnificent to behold. You're going to feel the love. Trust me. I hope so. I you hope will. So. You and will. I hope, and I, and I, and I hate to, I hope Pierre is going to be there with us. I mean, I, of I course. Think he's be there with us in spirit. Of course. All right. We love you guys. We cannot wait to see you tomorrow night. Again, the lineup, I, I just have to say it again, because this uh, this would be a great lineup in any situation, but the fact that it's happening in a pandemic completely blows my mind. Bull Weevils, there's Daryl Wilson of Bull Weevils. We'll see him on stage tomorrow. Jake Burns of Stiff Little Fingers. Local H, who, by the way, if you have any questions or concerns about performing a drive-in show, get in touch with Scott between now and then. I, I, is, I actually I, talked to Scott today about okay. doing drive-in shows because I, no, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, he's got that shit figured yeah. out. So we want to thank both, uh, you know, uh, Jake and Local H for doing this with us too. We know that they can get their own crowds any anywhere. So yeah, we got to we got to ride your coattails to get crowds. So that's where we're coming in. Uh, thank you too. <laughs>
So again, doors are at five. <laughs> Tickets are available at chicagodriving.com. I can't wait for this. Again, we love you guys. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, Thanks. James. Thanks, Appreciate man. it.